Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris and this is Starlink for RVs. I had the opportunity to get my hands on one of these dishes and I figured I would set it up and talk about it, review it, run some speed tests, and put it all on video so that you guys can check it out as well. So before we hop into it, if you enjoy this kind of content, make sure you like and subscribe to Crosstalk Solutions for two to three brand new tech videos every single week. Also follow Crosstalk on Twitter at Crosstalk SOL. Starlink for RVs is a brand new service they just came out with a couple of weeks ago. And it's kind of an interesting thing that they've done here in that it gives you the ability to kind of bypass their waiting list. If you go to starlink.com slash map and you look up your area, you're either gonna be in a light shaded area or a dark shaded area. Light shaded areas mean you have full availability to the Starlink residential service right off the bat. The dark shaded areas mean that you are on the waiting list. If you order it, there's no timeline for when you actually might receive your dish. However, if you instead purchase Starlink for RVs, you get the exact same dish for the exact same price. We'll talk about pricing in a second. You pay $25 more per month and you can get your dish immediately. The notion here is that it is for folks who are in RVs or traveling around regularly and they're going to be moving their dish from place to place. In this case, however, this location right here where I am in Idaho, United States, is on the waiting list. We are in a waiting list area, but with the Starlink for RV service, we were able to get this dish in under a week. So the dish was ordered, delivered, and set up very, very quickly, even though we're in a wait list area. Now the caveat to being in the wait list area is that any traffic that is going to and from this dish is lowest priority on the Starlink network. So if there are neighbors around here that have normal standard Starlink residential service, they will get higher priority than this dish here. So how does that affect you if you're looking to buy this product? Well, it depends on the area that you're in and the saturation of Starlink customers in that area. Also the time of day and many other factors. You know, how many people are downloading YouTube videos or doing whatever with their dishes while you're trying to do whatever you wanna do with your dish. As far as pricing goes, this is the exact same dish that you get with the Starlink residential service. It's the sort of new rectangular dish and the dish itself is $599 plus tax if taxes are in your area. There's also a $50 shipping charge. So figure it's $599 plus tax plus $50 shipping to get the dish. Uh, you also have to pay the first month's service right off the bat and that's $135 for the Starlink 4RV service. This by the way is essentially the same price as if you have the $110 a month Starlink residential service, but you opt to do the portability and move it to a different location for whatever period of time. They charge you $25 to do that. So essentially, you're paying the Starlink residential price plus the portability price all combined. Uh, the one advantage that you have with Starlink for RVs is that you can turn this off. So if you have a vacation home and you are only at that vacation home seasonally, uh, you can turn it off for the seasons that you are not there and you're not having to pay that base 110 a month that you would have to pay with the normal Starlink residential service. Setup of the dish itself was super, super simple. I mean, they just make it completely dead simple for you. You plug the dish into the router, you plug the router into power, and then everything else is handled through the application. Basically, we put this dish right here where there is a significant amount of tree cover. And after about five or 10 minutes, it was able to find its signal and it oriented itself into this sort of diagonal, you know, slanted position that it's in now. Uh, north is basically that way behind me uh, towards the lake over here. And once it was up and running, we had internet and that was it. And we were able to start running some speed tests. So that's the next thing we're gonna do is let's go ahead and run some speed tests and see what kind of speeds we can get out of this dish, even though it's the lowest priority on the Starlink network and it's not really in an ideal position uh, for you know perfectly clear, unobstructed view of the sky. Okay, running our first speed test now, I am about uh, 15 feet away from the wireless router that comes with Starlink for RVs. We're gonna say go. And in this case, we got 64 down and 10 up. Let's go ahead and run one more speed test from this same location, same time of day. Okay. 
and second speed test ended up at 197 down and 14 up. Let's just run one third speed test because that's a lot of variance between the two speed tests that I ran. Let's try this one more time. And the third speed test got us 122 by 14. So kind of in the middle uh, of the other speed tests that we ran. Now, I've been working on this Starlink dish remotely all day long today, and I've not noticed any sort of slowdowns or issues. Everything has been perfectly fine. So if you're in an area where you don't have good internet, getting 60 megabits is absolutely amazing and well worth the cost that you're gonna pay for this. And with the Starlink for RV service, even if you're not planning on using it with an RV, even if you're not planning on making it portable, it kind of does allow you to game the system a little bit and get your dish right away, even if you're in a waiting area like we are at this location here. Keep in mind that the speed test results that you're gonna get are going to vary greatly because of the prioritization of this Starlink dish on the Starlink network, as well as other factors that I mentioned previously, how many people are using it at that moment, how many people within your own residence are using it at that moment, right? There's a lot of factors that go into the speed test results that you might get, but if you have no internet, getting minimum 60 megabits is gonna be pretty awesome, and that's kind of the bottom line here. All right, so there you go, a quick look at the Starlink link for RV service as well as my first look at this new rectangular dish. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments below. I read every single comment that you guys write and I look forward to seeing them. All right, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please click subscribe. My name is Chris with Crosstalk Solutions and thank you so much for watching.